Welcome to this week's Eternal Monday, where Light Jolteon Stall takes on Blastoise Waterbox. This game comes from the June 2024 in real life Eternal Format event that took place at Dragon's Lair at Alamo Ranch in San Antonio, Texas. If you're new here, you might be wondering what the Eternal Format even is. In short, it's the unlimited format with a ban list. This means that deck builders can venture all the way back to the very start of the Pokemon trading card game and make use of cards that aren't legal in the official standard or even the expanded format. This large card pool creates an exciting and fun, rich deck building experience that can be endlessly enjoyable for all types of players of the Pokemon trading card game. From the most skilled to the newest of new, from the biggest tryhard to the kitchen table champion, the Eternal format has something for everyone. Unsure where to get started? I've got a getting started video on this very YouTube channel that is a great crash course for how to get into the format. Additionally, there is now a page on justinbasil.com that features a wide variety of decks for the Eternal Format. Both this page and the Getting Started video are linked in this video's description. Now, on to today's game. All right, as our players are getting set up here, we have the Light Jolteon player on the left and our Waterbox player on the right. Players make a decision about who's going first. Should be noted that Light Jolteon is pretty oppressive, unfortunately. There's very little most decks can do to counter it. However, this Blastoise Waterbox deck does have a way to deal with it, so hopefully we get to see that in action in this game. So Blastoise, we've kind of seen Blastoise before. However, most of the games we've seen with that Blastoise, uh, the Blastoise Waterbox deck were done by a different player with a different list. This player has chosen to take a slightly different route. Um, Different pilot, different ideas behind the deck. You'll notice this version of the deck is playing a Blastoise from base set. The player is actually running the copy from Celebration, of course, but uh, the idea, of course, is the same. Right away, we see a Dive Ball, so our Blastoise player is going to be going first here. Dive Ball is finding a Radiant Greninja. Radiant Greninja, really important in this matchup, actually. Uh, you do want to be able to KO two things at the same time. So Radiant Greninja drawing a couple of cards. Looks like both those were water energy. Kind of unfortunate. Do you see a Luxury Ball on our Blastoise player's side? They do kind of need to get a Squirtle into play at some point here, but it's not going to happen this turn. We do see an Energy Evolution on this Eevee immediately finding Light Jolteon. Light Jolteon going to come into play and be able to attack right away. So that, that uh, Pulse Guard is going to prevent any damage if it is greater than 30. So if the player on the Blastoise side is doing more than 30 damage, Light Jolteon is just going to prevent that damage. And then with cards like Rough Seas, that damage can be immediately healed off, and then the player has to try to do it all over again. And uh, it's pretty rough. All right, Team Rocket's handiwork. Discarding just two cards there. Unfortunately, one of them is a Squirtle. Not ideal to see as the Blastoise player, but it is what it is. Berkeley Hill does come down, giving another out to some sort of water Pokemon. We do see a clay doll off of that luxury ball. Very good draw, very, very good draw. So that means that the Blastoise player isn't out of the game. They do have a way to get into something that they need here. Let's see, Blastoise, they're eyeing up a Blastoise and they're eyeing up Superior Energy Retrieval, which is a little rough. Oh, they're, they're okay, that's much better. They're putting it down for clay doll. I was worried they were gonna discard it. Uh, but yeah, they have they have just discarded a water energy for concealed cards. We have a second manual attachment on that Radiant Greninja. They haven't had a whole lot of luck getting Blastoise out this game, but that's okay. And are they just passing? They're going to choose to play down Palkia, so Palkia does go out too. Okay, V, that is. Green's Exploration going to find two trainer cards on our Light Jolteon side here. It looks like we're getting, sorry, it looks like we're getting a big parasol and something else. Big parasol is going to prevent effects of attacks. So stuff like the damage counters placed by a Dragapult EX, for example, would be shielded. It's like a luxurious cape is attached to the electric on the bench. Gonna go for another Team Rocket's handiwork. Indeed. Saving that for next turn, most likely. Trying to mill a little bit more out of that deck on the opponent's side. 
Parasol probably coming down on the Light Jolteon. I don't know how relevant it really is for this match, but eh. It's out of the deck at least. Yeah, big Parasol attached. And it's just another Light Guard. Light Guard doesn't... Or, sorry. Pulse Guard doesn't do any damage, but it does prevent damage. We see, once again, another Cosmic Power. Drawing into the Lapras is pretty good here. Missing the energy necessary to use Radiant Greninja as an attacker, though. At this point, they're probably going to have to play that Marnie and just hope they can draw into another energy. Oh, there is an energy in their hand. Okay. Oh, they're choosing to discard. Interesting. They're choosing to discard the water energy for additional draw. Manaphy. Manaphy in hand. Manaphy not really useful in this matchup. The Light Jolteon player not really doing any attacking in the the uh, damaging sense, at least. Marnie does see play after all. We find a rare candy. We already have Blastoise in play. So, I'm assuming that tool attached to the Clay Hall is a float zone. It is, clearly. So we do see the Radiant Greninja come down. Radiant Greninja attaching the energy, but we've already used the supporter card this turn. So, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to do a whole heck of a lot. Uh, just putting some damage. Okay, that's interesting. So we the thing we really, really needed at this point was some sort of way to remove that luxurious cape on the electric because we're not able to do enough damage for a double KO. So we're setting up the damage on that, that electric to try to make it closer to knockout. Obviously, we're not damaging that light jolteon on the active spot because of the effect of its attack. But all the same, we got to keep going. All right, we do have another double attachment, most likely from Blastoise's Deluge effect. That's the boundaries cross Blastoise that this deck plays. The deck runs the split of both. The Deluge can attach to non-water Pokemon, whereas the base set Blastoise only can attach to water Pokemon. So that it is important to have both. The, the water, or the base set Blastoise, of course, can work under ability lock, whereas the Deluge one obviously cannot. See, another Dive Ball. Dive Ball going for Lapras. Lapras going for Pokemon Ranger. Pokemon Ranger going to clear the effect of the uh, the protecting effect there on that Jolteon. Light Jolteon immediately going down to Greninja. Greninja going to double KO. Uh, both Pokemon there because of the effect, or because of the damage from its attack. So, Light Jolteon does go down thanks to Pokemon Ranger. Pokemon Ranger, a extremely impactful and important card in this matchup. Let's look at our deck lists up first here. We have Light Jolteon Stall. Light Jolteon Stall, you've kind of seen how it works. It's a very simple deck and then it's quite straightforward, but it's also quite effective. You have the Energy Evolution Eevee, that is the Energy Evolution with a Poke Power, which allows you to attach an energy and then the type of that energy allows you to evolve up into a evolution of your choosing. In this case, we are, of course, going to go for Light Jolteon because that's the focus of our deck. Light Jolteon's Pulse Guard prevents damage being done to Light Jolteon if that damage is more than 30, which is pretty impactful because a lot of things can't really do a little bit of damage. And on top of that, if they do just that little bit of damage, we can pretty, pretty readily heal that off with Rough Seas. So it works out for us. We also run an Electric. Electric is really important here, actually. It's not so much as utility so much as just something that's on the bench that cannot be gusted up that can be a body on the field for when our light jolteon does get knocked out or if it's for whatever reason right so light Jol electric is there to be a ungustable bench sitter so that we can have an opportunity to set up another light jolteon should hap should something happen to the one in the active spot the deck runs on the Green's Exploration Engine, allowing you to find pieces because you have no Pokemon in play with abilities. You can just find two trainer cards, uh, whether that's a Buddy Buddy Poffin, a Trainer's Mail, a Luxurious Cape, Rough Seas, Pow Hand Extension. You have options, quite a few of them. Right? And then you have cards like Team Rocket's Handiwork to mill out your opponent and prevent them from uh, doing what they want to do to get out of your stall option. And then last, but 
very not very much not least is that luxurious cape which we saw be extremely important in that matchup made it so that the blastoise water box player had to intentionally hit into the electric with a luxurious cape on it just so that it could do enough damage on a follow-up turn with the pokemon ranger having cleared the effect on like Jolteon to double KO. Otherwise, we would have knocked out the like Jolteon in the active spot, but the Electric would have done its job and gone to the active spot and just kind of ruined our day, right? So that's Light Jolteon. And now we have Blastoise Waterbox. This deck is a known quantity in the format. We have some innovations here from the new player who's picked up Blastoise Waterbox. We have that Blastoise from base set taking over for the second copy of Daily's Blastoise. Now with that split, you're a little bit more resilient against a Billy Lock, stuff like Garbotoxin, for example, will not be ending your day anymore. You're not going to be reliant on that GX attack on Blastoise, but you do now have access to Rain Dance to attach to your water Pokemon to get them to do damage. You also have access to a 1-1 Palkia line so that you can Star Portal as needed. And then, of course, the next big impact in this deck, and really the most important one, I think, is that Pokemon Ranger. Pokemon Ranger has been a criminally underplayed card in the Eternal format, and this deck has, of course, made use of it. And you could see what kind of impact that made in this list because it literally gave it the way to win against Light Jolteon. Anyway, that is all for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you again in the next video.